Hi everybody, it's Robert Pears from Melbourne in Australia. I'm a general practitioner or family physician as they called in America and the subject on this clip is how to have a smart child and so we have two ways of doing this. We can have a very healthy pregnancy, a very good diet in pregnancy and we can hope that that does the job and some breastfeeding I suppose as well. Uh, or we might already have a child who's 3 or 5 or 10 or even 12 or 14 and we want to see if we can improve that child's IQ. It's a very interesting nutritional challenge. So let's look at the pregnancy. So if you're thinking of having a child, you're not pregnant yet, um, your mother's to be, what I advise in pregnancy is a very low fat, a very healthy diet. Uh, and uh, the reason we need low fat in this, uh, in this story is that if you eat much butter cream or cheese or chocolate or cakes and pastries that is saturated fat in the pregnancy you are bound to produce an anxious child who may have problems with their intelligence not necessarily you can get anxious people who are intelligent but you do get a tendency among the boys especially to have a bit of a fall in the IQ by maybe five points or more uh, it could be ten points so we've got to have a low fat pregnancy diet and that's the first thing. Uh, also in pregnancy, there's something else to avoid, and that is refined vegetable oils like sunflower, canola, soybean seed, and so forth. Uh, Chinese takeaway is standard, ordinary refined vegetable oils are low in vitamin E. They cause Alzheimer's disease after 50 years consumption in adults. Uh, they will cause uh, damage to the fetal brain, resulting in attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. These kids about nearly 10% of American children and 7 or 8% of Australian children, these kids aren't necessarily lacking IQ. I think their IQ is usually okay, uh, but uh, they've got behaviour problems and learning difficulties and uh, poor concentration, so, uh, so uh, we don't want that either. Uh, so now, what if we have a child who's 5 or 7 or that sort of primary school age group and we'd like to improve their IQ, maybe we can do this. First of all, if we exclude saturated fat from that diet with minimal cheese and minimal chocolate uh, and uh, you know, minimal fatty sausages and salami and so forth in the boys, then we'll stop oxidising the brain and damaging connections and probably their mental imp imp performance and their physical muscular performance also will improve. So the first thing is get a healthy diet with uh, low fat, with f fruits and vegetables and grains and legumes for uh, that child. Now, as to actually improving the IQ, suppose we have a normal, healthy, seven-year-old child who's not the least bit anxious, that have no ADD, the pregnancy diet's been very healthy, and we have a normal kid. Uh, do we have a problem here? Yes, we do. This child is too normal. We want to improve them. They're suffering from idiopathic normalcy. Can we get them a bit smarter? That's the challenge. Uh, so to uh, anybody interested in nutrition, this is a fascinating challenge, and it, I think we might be able to do it. This is how we do it. We've got the grains and legumes to provide a special sugar which e provides extra energy in muscle and heart and brain. This sugar is called inositol. It's in grains and legumes, so corn and oats and nuts and beans, muesli seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, chickpeas, lentils, baked beans. It's also in nuts and inositol is also in citrus. It's in orange juice. Just orange juice is a good start. And we've got rock melon or also called cantaloupe. So this is inositol has specific effects on anti-aging genes and raises the level of energy, including very likely in nerve cells in the brain. And, uh, and, and the anti-aging effects of inositol uh, also include um, uh, increased branching and connections between nerve cells. So that's a great start. We've got a low-fat diet with fruits and veg for general good purposes, but specifically enhancing new, new nerve cell energy and branching with the inositol sugar in corn, oats, nuts, beans, rock melon and citrus. Can we add something else? Yes. From Massachusetts Institute of Technology, we've got three more nutrients pioneered there by Rich, Professor Richard Wertman. That is fish oil, choline and uridine and you can find these nutrients which increase the number of synapses and nerve connections and make rats very clever. Fish oil of course is in fish so salmon, tuna, sardine, mackerel, something like that, oily ocean fish. Choline is in egg yolk, it's also in wheat germ, there's some in chicken. We might go mainly for the egg there, that's the lesser than in the egg yolk, the phosphatidylcholine, that's choline, a remarkable nutrient. And uridine 
is the third member of the Synapse Boosting Group, this MIT mixture as I call it, naming it after the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or brain mix if you like. The, the uridine is in beetroots and broccoli. It's also rather rich in breast milk. It's in beer. But let's go for the beetroot and broccoli. These are children, not alcoholics. So we've got fish oil, choline in eggs, eggs and maybe wheat germ, and uridine in beetroots and broccoli, that beets and broccoli. So we've got all together, the nutrients to boost IQ are the inositol in the grains and legumes and the orange juice, and the fish, eggs, beetroot and broccoli to make the extra effect. So putting all those together, we may see, it hasn't been done, but it, we may see an improvement in IQ. Now, the, uh, for some confirmation that this may be a good prediction that we will see this effect. Vegetarian children appear to be a bit smarter. It's not certain whether it's because their parents are naturally more intelligent, which is the case, they are smarter, but they may be getting this effect from their grains and legumes. The inositol particularly is providing uh, this anti-aging energy in their brain. That's an intriguing possibility. We get to confirm that they have a, the vegetarian children are just naturally smarter because of the smart parents who choose vegetarianism, or they're getting something out of their grains and legumes. I suspect a bit of both, but it's a good start. So that's the end of this story, that we may be able to improve the IQ of school children, including secondary school children, including adults even, um, make them smarter and more focused with inositol, fish, eggs, beetroot and broccoli. So once again, the inositol is in corn, oats, nuts and beans, and chickpeas and lentils too, and rock melon and citrus. And will we see smarter kids? I think we will.